Good morning, folks. Phil Gallagher of Thrave and you here for another Legacy stream. Today we are going to be playing a donation deck list from Spatula of the Ages, known enchantress lover and pioneer. Um, today's deck list is like ghost pepper spicy. So the general idea with Enchantress is you put things like Argothian Enchantress and Enchantress's Presence into play, and then you vomit out cheap enchantments as quickly as you can in order to churn through your deck, draw a lot of cards, and build up a huge advantage over time. And then you kill your opponent with cards like Destiny Spinner that let you turn your lands into huge creatures. Destiny Spinner also makes your creature and enchantment spells uncounterable, which is really strong when you're running so many enchantments. So the thing that's spicy about this deck list is twofold. Number one, it is a blue version so that it can play Estrid's Invocation. It enters the battlefield as a copy of an enchantment I control, except that it has at the beginning of your upkeep, you can exile this enchantment. If you do, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So this enchantment enters play each turn as a potentially new enchantment. And many of your enchantments, such as Trial of Ambition, have cool effects when they enter the battlefield. Uh, and that means that you can do pretty disgusting things. And that's why we're trying out these new sagas. So the most relevant part of Binding of the Old Gods is the first line. Destroy target non-land permanent and opponent controls. So you can get, like, recurring Vindicates by replaying this. It's, it's not technically a Vindicate, it can't hit lands, but, like, you, you get what I mean. And King Narfi's Betrayal uh, is similarly good. Each player mills four cards, then you may exile a creature or planeswalker card from their graveyard. And then two and three are the same thing, you do it twice. Until the end of turn, you may cast spells from among cards exiled with King Narfi's Betrayal, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. So if your opponent has something super cool in their deck, like say an Oko that can just spiral the game out of control on its own, you can snag it and take it over. And many of these enchantments have effects like drawing a card or killing some creatures when enchantments ETB, so recycling things with Astrid's Invocation can be really strong. Uh, the sideboard here is kind of spicy. We have a Spore Frog, <laughs> Legacy All-Star, uh, which sacrifices to Fog. And that's a sort of l life gain spell that you can find off a Green Sun and against something like a Merit Lodge deck or maybe a Blue-Red Delver deck that threatens to do a lot of damage in a single turn. That can be really, really useful. Um, otherwise, a lot of the stuff that we're seeing here is normal enchantressy stuff. We do notably have four copies of Mindbreak Trap, so we can fight back against some of the, uh, the Tybalt-style decks. Um, I usually have a lot of fun playing Enchantress. Um, this version is different from what I would probably be playing. When I play Enchantress, I really like to max out on Carpet of Flowers. Like, that's one of my favorite legacy sideboard cards, period. And Enchantress can draw a card while casting Carpet of Flowers. So, um, I usually play somewhere between two and four of those when I play Enchantress. They're just so good. All right, anyway, folks watching on YouTube, if you're excited about this, you know, please like, comment as you're watching the video, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Uh, it helps my metrics a lot and helps more people find my content. Here we go. Let's battle. Um, okay, my first opening hand is a little bit awkward in that I have multiple Enchantress effects, which is something that you really want in an opening hand, but I don't really have something great as a follow-up. I think I am going to keep this because I am on the play, but I would probably ship this on the draw. Like, my current plan is turn 2 Enchantress, turn 3 Enchantress, turn 4 Trial of Ambition, draw 2. I hope to just draw 1 mana. <clears throat> uh, ooh, shit, we're playing against the Tybalt deck. Uh, we're not going to win game one. <laughs> we kept a hand that was slow-ish in the first place, and then we got paired against one of the fastest decks in the format. Yep, okay. 
So for those of you who haven't seen this before, this is a little bit rough. My opponent has a Tybalt on turn one. So they get an emblem with, you can play cards exiled with Tybalt, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. You can plus two to exile cards from each player's library. You can negative three to exile a creature or artifact, and you can negative eight to exile all graveyards and add four mana. <clears throat> Luckily, I don't think their Tybalt is all that good against me. Oh, it's just like not easy to see what's exiled with Tybalt, huh? It's just like not left under Tybalt or in a specific revealed zone. I have to like keep track of this. That was a... Okay. Actually, why, why am I bothering to keep track of it if, like, I can't really do anything about it, you know? Also, Argothian Enchantress does have Shroud. <clears throat> oh, the Tybalt controller gets a window that shows what they can play. Well, isn't that nice? Morning, Spatula of the Ages, and uh, once again, thank you for the donation. Oh, That's actually legitimately somewhat annoying. They take my other Enchantress. Actually, I think I take back something that I said during the deck tech. Mindbreak Trap is probably not actually good against this, right? Because they cast, sh like, one spell followed by a bolt. Hmm. I need to fetch my black mana before it's just like gone. I, like, as far as Tybalt, Tybalt resolving on turn one or two is really strong, but it's not, oh, fuck me, they got a Plague Engineer. Like, at least I, I drew Enchantress's presence before Plague Engineer happened. Um, this is going to be a slog, though. Like, this game very legitimately might end up going on until, like, turn 15 or something like that. Playing my Doomwake Giant is going to be awkward, though. I want to like find a Binding of the Old Gods to get rid of Tybalt before I do that. They don't want my opponent to just like exile Doomwake Giant and then cast it. All right. Always yes, always yield. Um. Estrid's Invocation. I mean, Estrid's Invocation on Trial of Ambition definitely does things. I have five mana this turn. 
I guess I'll leave the... Oh, yeah, I can... Estrid's yeah, Invocation. Is this top guard? All right. So let's... Bury Enchantress's presence, put this in the middle, and then draw this. Conan has to read this one. That's understandable. <laughs> Ooh, that was brutal. Oh, yeah. The whole reason I didn't play this deck on... Uh, what was it? Wednesday was that Card Harder had three Astrid's Invocations in stock. So I waited until a different day just so like they had them back in stock. Astrid's Invocation is from one of the weird supplementary sets, right? Yeah, this is like a treasure chest card or something. Those cards end up being really expensive. Like, I don't want to go all economics at 9 in the morning, uh, but a lot of the ways that, how do I say this? That's a little annoying. Just going to use that to take this Doomwake Giant out of my hand. Um... A lot of the ways that cards are being injected into Magic Online does not meet demand. And so we end up with Force of Negations being, I don't know, 70 ticks or something like that. Valkyries are, I think, 80 ticks right now. Like, the Magic Online economy is not particularly healthy. Uh, it's admittedly unhealthy in a different way from the way Arena's economy is unhealthy, but um, it's still not great. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, uh, potentially six if I draw Utopia Sprawl, which I think I will. Oh, right. Shit, the Plague Engineer. Okay, my turn was not good there. I was looking at chat. I was not looking at the board. Um, so I, I, I obviously played this turn suboptimally. Uh, I'm probably good on green mana. I have black, black. I'm not going to need blue, blue in a turn. I guess I'll just pick green again. Oh, I don't have white cards main deck, do I? No. Actually, I don't have white cards at all in this one. Yeah, SCK, the things like the legend rule happen basically instantaneously, and then triggers are placed on the stack afterwards. Uh, 
they're out of things to cascade into. Uh, I guess that does mean I can look at their entire deck. Um, so they're the build with Brazen Borrowers and Mystic Disputes and Misdirections. <clears throat> um, yeah, so I can Enchantress's Presence and draw a card, but I don't actually get anywhere. Okay. Oh yeah, shit, I could have shuffled. Uh, regardless, I don't think any one draw gets us there, right? Like, I don't have any sort of moat effect in the main deck. And I couldn't get more than one edict effect. I don't have enough mana to activate multiple destiny spinners, and the Doomwake Giant was gone. I don't think I actually had outs there anyway, um, but that was an early concession. Um, yeah, so I, I just don't think I get to win this matchup. Like, back to basics can steal games, maybe. Uh, like, elephant grass has text, kind of. I'm I'm just like so exceptionally slow versus my opponent. And like there are some things that I like kind of want to board in, like say Leobold. But if that happens to get stolen versus me, it is catastrophic. And the same is true of Engineered Plague. How does this read? I guess I can board in the King Narfi's betrayal to try to get my own Tybalt. I don't need Carpet of Flowers. I feel relatively confident in that. My ground seals draw cards, but otherwise aren't really ideal. That's probably an easy-ish cut. I think that's all I'm going to board. Yeah, beer. We're not uh, very heavy on win cons. All right, uh, this is a turn two Enchantress. Turn three Narfi's Betrayal. Um, and is not really exciting. I think I want something with some mana acceleration. I think I need to just go faster than this. God, this hand's awkward. So, Back to Basics is a great card versus my opponent, and so is Binding of the Old Gods. But I only have green mana currently. Which, as a whole, makes this exceptionally awkward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 14 hits for colored mana. Um, oh, I missed Abundant Growth. 18 hits. Keep. In addition to just those, this hand also is just totally fine if we pick up an Enchantress effect in the next couple of dump draws. But, um, oh, that's really good. My opponent can still have Force of Will effects. Should I just slam the back to basics now? They get one spell. 
Or do I save this to bindings of the old god, the Tybalt? That's tough. The Tybalt is less scary if they don't have functional mana. <clears throat> but then I also lose my trop that I play out. Uh, maybe this just gets countered. Morning, Dino Cat. I don't have this huge sense of urgency in answering the Tybalt. It's just important that, like, Binding of the Old Gods can get it later. I don't get, like, I even remember what you did last time. You are forgiven. Yeah, Abundant Growth would be great, Fetch Land would be acceptable, Basic Swamp would be gas. So this, back to basics, is slowing my opponent down. And they, they gave us the oof in chat. But... I am not really functioning as of right now. Lee. Do it like that. Force of will, get wrecked, sucker. Opponent does have seven cards in hand. That's somewhat likely to happen. Oh, baby. So you're telling me there's a chance. I can Trial of Ambition away both of these creatures. Plus, I can give my creatures Death Touch! My opponent can probably make another Tybalt again soon, so I shouldn't get too complacent, but there's a real chance. It feels like I might be getting there. <laughs> okay, they're going to produce another Tybalt. While that's certainly not good for me, as we've seen, Tybalt sitting in play is not catastrophic for this deck.
Oh, baby. All right, so I have three, four, five, six mana. I probably just need to do this and kill that Tybalt rather than try to, like, maximum greed off uh, Enchantress's presence. Sure does have Death Touch. And I sure don't have another black mana to cast Trial of Ambition this turn. Alright, uh, we're probably dead. Especially if my opponent can just make one more creature. But, like, we, we knew that going into this that we weren't going to be particularly well suited to fighting this deck. Wall. That's strong. Alright, so this is the big turn where something has to happen. Um, well, I guess we can just take two next turn and still be alive. Alright. I mean, this is cool. This is a way to stabilize, but I can't cast it yet. Opia Sprawl will give me blue mana, so that's good news. Jesus. That is fucking savage. Oh, I get to choose the color? Neat. I mean, I guess that makes sense, but um, never had that happen before. You can have white mana. I can't really play Destiny Spinner. Otherwise they like exalt that exile that with Tybalt and then like it's bad news bears for me. I have two, four, five. I'll have six. Well, I could play Destiny Spinner, activate it, attack and kill Tybalt. Ah, uh, they found Binding of the Old Gods. Fair. Um, I get my blue mana back, though, because they did that. So, that's a thing. They can cast some of these things. I don't know which ones. They can cast some of those. Uh, I have one trap, so this doesn't actually fetch blue mana. 
I have one, two, three, six, seven, eight total mana. I'm not sure whether or not I am supposed to play another Enchantress effect. My gut leans towards a no, because there are some expensive things like Binding of the Old Gods that I can hit that would be very good to cast. Speak of the Devil. Okay. I don't have another blue mana this turn. And can binding of the old gods and destroy that Valky. Uh, and then I can chump block with Argothian Enchantress. That doesn't feel good. Like, I want to use this to kill Tybalt. Uh, abundant growth is actually great. All right, so the current goal is survive for a turn cycle and then cast one or multiple Estrid's invocations on Binding of the Old Gods and try to take over the game. I think it's okay for me to go to one. There shouldn't really be a difference between one and two here. Set up our second blue for next turn. Also, I do just have 23 cards in library throwing it out there. Um, so let's maybe get rid of some of these enchantress effects. I can be dead to something like a Plague Engineer. Pretty easily. Yeah, it actually might be good for me that I'm blocking with Argothian Enchantress this turn. The scariest thing for me here is my opponent just vomiting a couple of small creatures. Like, Simeon Spirit Guides are lethal. Oh, that's actually horrendous. They get to take my Destiny Spinner. I guess I'm glad they didn't do that pre-combat and just, like, kill me. Hurrah! <laughs> Alright, so my opponent has three different lethal threats next turn. I have three different Vindicates. 
They can probably cast all of them. I haven't done the math yet. So here's one. Here's two. I would need another blue mana. I do have another blue mana. Can't fetch. I do need more mana. Yeah, my opponent realizes that they missed lethal with Valky and Spinner now. Yep, I agree. All right, four lethal threats, plus a Tibalt. I guess the easy... My Doomwake's still in my deck. My Doomwake is still in my deck. I guess let's start here. Ugin, uh, Ugin would do things. Destiny Spinner? Trample on Haste. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, that does stuff. I can cast Destiny Spinner. Have one, two, three, four. Five, six mana remaining. I can only activate once. Um, so that doesn't quite get there. My Sanctum is not in exile yet. Go ahead and cast one of these. I guess this is really awkward if they end up having Force plus a blue card remaining as their last two cards, and I should have considered playing Destiny Spinner. Alright, well, I didn't expect the round versus the Turbo Tybalt deck to last over 35 minutes, but here we are. Force of Vigor targeting two of my best cards. Okay. Strong. Oh, there's Doomwake Giant. All right, so I have one, two, three, four, five mana floating. Can I just use this Doomwake Giant? Like, can I just make a Wild Growth and then wipe my opponent's board? One, one, two, three, four, five. So I have enough to cast Doom Like Giant. And then I can play one enchantment as of right now. If I draw a land, then I can play a second.
think I need more mana. I supposed to just like naturally try to spike the land? Then I wipe all of this stuff. Oh, that's not good enough, right? Because Tibalt minus is on Doomwake, and then Oko animates this and I die anyway. Shit. Maybe I need to keep doing abundant growth type stuff and trying to find Sanctum specifically. Eh. More to look at it. There's not that many cards left. All right, so I have one, two, three, four mana remaining. So Doomwake's off the table now. I think this is the point where I can safely scoop it up. I've missed enough times. Like, I can play a Destiny Spinner. I can play an Agrothian Enchantress that puts two bodies on the board, and then I'm still, like, effectively dead to three different things. Uh... An Esther's Invocation, copy mana. I have one more draw. Alright. Uh, I guess Destiny Spinner is an enchantment. I'll play that. Yeah. Alright. What a grind. GG's. Okay, the round two is... Versus a Yorian deck. If we're versus a blue Yorian deck, this hand is gassed. If we're not versus a blue Yorian deck, and this is like Yorian Death and Taxes, this hand is awkward. Now that I've said that, I'm clicking keep. Dislikes only on the Bant Archon. Hmm. You're not going to like some of the things that happen with Collector Oofs in this league. <laughs> the, uh, the Bant Archon deck, for anyone not uh, following Vintage, is essentially a Noble Hierarch Hate Bears Acceleration deck that also plays a bunch of the like restricted blue cards. Turn one ponder has been called. Turn one ponder has happened. That was the Dryad Arbor check. Second land is not bad. Um... Probably don't need to worry about Wasteland all that much this game. But I'm still just going to fetch a basic forest, because anytime you're wrong about that sort of thing is devastating. And Carpet of Flowers should fix my colors for me.
Notably, if we had something like a Dryad Arbor that we wanted to fetch up, we could uh, do that this turn. <clears throat> but we don't. I think Green Sun is ultimately going to be my finisher. I'll grab this. This is probably fine to grab now. So, we have bonus mana in play, we have bonus card draw in play, and our opponent probably can't present a particularly strong clock. About the best thing they could do is play an Oko here. I guess they could like Teferi bounce my Enchantress's presence or something. Oh, fuck me. All right, well... God damn it. God damn it. Please don't force. Ah. Like, do I do I just concede now? I think I'm dead now. Like, I'm not actually dead now, but I've missed a land drop. Leovold literally draws a card every turn because of Carpet of Flowers. Uh, my opponent has insulation from Trial of Ambition. Yeah, alright, now my opponent has isolation from two Trials of Ambition. Every turn that I wait is another turn where my opponent gets another Carpet of Flowers draw, plus another set of, like, doing whatever they want on their own turn. Especially, like, with cards like this on the horizon now. Just, uh, it's just no bueno. Like, that hits play next turn. Like, it hit for four this turn, followed by ten. I'm just dead in two turns. I think I'm uh I think I'm comfortable throwing the towel in there. The worst part is that Leovold is probably a one of in their 80 card deck. I think I want Leovold. Don't hate this. That might be more or less the only things that I actually want to do. Doomwake Giant seems kind of medium here. 
am really looking to win via Destiny Spinner. And like paying a bunch of mana for a Doomwake Giant and then just having it get Elked or Swords to Plowshared is kind of awkward. But at the same time, it's totally fine versus Ice Fang Coatles. <clears throat> Might just like trim a land since this game is going to go long. Ground Seal, like, Ground Seal draws cards, but Uro, like, n nothing involving Uro targets. I think I'm just going to trim one of those. Um... Yeah, I, I don't have mana to cast stuff here. Uh, unfortunately, this one has to go back. Forest Wild Growth, two mana on turn two. Uh... With a land, this has Green Sun for Enchantress. If I miss the land, I have Miri's Guile. This hand is not good. Uh, but is it good enough? A five-card hand that can produce an enchantress and start drawing cards is going to be better than this. Yeah, this is fine. This goes back. I think I dump this. Dumping this makes it harder to double spell. But it means that I have more possibility of doing broken things later. I only have one Sarah's Sanctum in this list, so it's not like I can just find another one. It's kind of like, take it now or probably never get it. The interesting thing will be like whether I decide to play Argothian Enchantress or Destiny Spinner first. Des like, playing Destiny Spinner first is not if my opponent doesn't just have something like Swords of Plowshares. But I would kind of like to use Destiny Spinner to draw a card next turn. Argothian and Enchantress is harder to answer. Like, it basically requires a counterspell or something weird like a Plague Engineer. So I think it's correct to just play this out first. Not the end of the world if I miss anyway. Like, with Miri's Guile and Green Sun in addition to that, I have a lot of control over my draws currently. Morning over Voltage.
a dead of winter sort of effect is going to end up sucking here. But I have managed to draw through the things on top of my library that aren't fantastic. So I get to look at fresh cards with Miri's Guile next turn and probably end up getting pretty deep. Um, I have played around with the Mono Green Storm version of Enchantress. I think I played that on stream once. It wasn't particularly memorable. Okay. That's fine. No, no one of my individual cards is particularly valuable here. Like, the Wild Growth is probably my best card on the field right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those all suck. None of that's castable. Either take an Estrids or a Binding. Neither one's great right now. I'm also like leaning so hard into a board wipe, and I don't really have much of a choice about it. I need to shuffle this stuff away. Yeah, the, the Leovold in hand, so I can't green sun for it, is also just like insult to injury here. Okay, I don't care about this spell. I really don't, but I do care about not shuffling the top cards of my library a lot. There's no way my opponent could know that, but that play is so much better than it looks. Turn off auto yields. Uh, I'm just going to put this Leovold in play now, maybe. Yeah, let's just put this Leovold in play now. Oh, yeah, you're right. Maybe I'll let them tutor first. Like, so they don't find something that answers it. was a Lurin the whole time. Alright, so I'll let that hit play. I guess I'm just going to poop this Leovold into play so I can have six. I assume I'm still dead here. I don't want to like wait too wrong, long and be wrong about this.
We'll figure out what their kill condition is, because there's a couple of different ways that these decks can kill. You were saying? Do I have anything that I can actually draw into that's free interaction? No. Uh, so I'll go ahead and concede here. All right. Rough. Um, okay, so this is an opening hand that has turn two Enchantress and then turn three Destiny Spinner, draw a card, and then hope to go from there. I'm going to keep this one, but there is some degree of risk in keeping this hand. When am I going to play DNT next? Uh, DNT is currently not in the donation queue. I will be playing Paper DNT for 90s MTG on Wednesday and paper MTG for the Legacy Pit the following Thursday, the 18th. But I currently do not have plans to play DNT on the stream. Okay, uh, so we're facing down Mountain, which is most likely something like Red Prison, or maybe like Mono Red Sneak, or in some worlds we could be playing against something more fringe, uh, like, say, Ruby Storm. So... I probably just need to play Utopia Sprawl on one. The question is, like, do, do I fetch a forest with this Verdant Catacombs now to play around a Blood Moon? I don't think I do that. I think I'm going to do this and name Black so that I have an out to some sort of hate piece. Yeah, I mean, burn's possible. Like, an Eidolon could come down this turn and make my life awkward, for example. Oh, uh, yeah, we're probably playing against, like, either Ruby Storm or a Mono Red Sneak Attack deck. Uh, either way, we're not well suited to that fight. Surely the red prison player doesn't keep a hand that's that slow, right? Surely. I guess if I'm not using this land, I could have just as safely put the Verdant Catacombs into play, and then if they are Red Prison, it's fine. Oh, I think we're playing against Ruby Storm. We have no game against that in game one. Ugh. Four mind break traps, though. Four mind break traps. This deck has been picking up a lot of steam recently. So someone donated for Brian to play it. Then someone donated for me to play it. Then someone watched Brian's video and went, that build sucks, play my build instead, and donated again for it. Yeah. All right, I guess I can Binding of the Old Gods that.
they don't have that many cards. That's the good news. Like, my opponent mulligan and then cast a card disadvantage spell. Sending a message. The bad news is that they did discard a Past in Flames. So, Past in Flames plus Empty the Warrens does technically mean that they have a live win condition. Um, Doomwake Giant is a card that is potentially going to matter. Maybe not this turn, but a few turns down the road. Alright, so Bergy is in play. So, whenever you cast a spell, add red. Until end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. I'm reading you that card. The reality is I'm just going to kill that with Trial of Ambition, but I thought you should know. There's also a world where I just play Astrid's Invocation, actually, and kill it with that. Like, Astrid's Invocation on Binding of the Old Gods and just get the Astrid's Engine going. I think I like that. All right. I'm glad my opponent has creatures, because if they were just a spell-focused version, I don't really have a lot of game versus them. Interestingly, I can let this tick up, can't I? I don't know that I will, but it's it's something that I technically can do. Get in there, Enchantress. Oh. That's good for me? I mean, it's good for me if I don't die. Like, refreshing my hand is very strong here. Oh, that might kill my opponent straight up. One, two, three, four, five enchantments as of right now. The issue is that my opponent can, like, pass something like a Rite of Flame into a Jeska's Will. That makes seven mana, and then they can just go, and I'll die. We'll see if something like that happens. Um, well, we're playing against our third combo deck in a row, so... No. <laughs> we're not dying quickly. But, uh... We're certainly not favored. Um, the good news here is that my opponent isn't just, like, turboing off, so they might not just, like, decisively have it. 
Um, Beer of Nylia, sometimes they draw cards. The issue is that their graveyard already has, like, Past in Flames plus Empty the Warrens. So, like, plus Burning Wish as well. So they can probably win without drawing cards relatively easily. So Faithless Looting, Manamorphose, and maybe a second Reforge the Soul are probably about the only card draw cards that they have. Morning, Kebaso. You, uh... You walk in in the middle of us being comboed off, I think. It's not clear that they have it yet, but it's spooky. Ruby Storm. Oh, that's another Faithless looting? That's relatively good for me. Another Faithless Looting. Alright. So we're not dead this turn. Alright. One, two, three, four, five... Six, seven, pretty easily. Those are free. What do I want to turn this into? Maybe I just try to do a Utopia Sprawl this turn. All right, my creatures have Death Touch. The Sarah Sanctum is pretty darn good. Let's see where this goes. I have mana to cast this Argothian Enchantress. Let's do it. Alright, so now some of these start actually costing mana. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in play. I want to activate this. Okay, I, I should actually map. So can I make three, seven, seven right now? Do I just have 12 mana? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I can. Get him dead. Uh, how do I tell which ones of these were in play previously? All right, it animates the lands, not the enchantments. So... I can animate these two. I need more enchantments. I 
I can play an Abundant Growth on a Sarah's Sanctum. That'll give me a green back later. Um... I have a whole bunch of mana, but I don't know that I can actually kill this turn. And I'm really worried about that Past in Flames over there. Six, seven, eight. I think what I'm going to do is just accept. Oh, this is an either or thing. Okay, I see. I think I'm just going to accept that I don't have it this turn. I'm going to go and grab my Leobold. Oh, is Leovold a sideboard card? Not Leovold's a sideboard card. Whoops. Uh, I'm going to go and grab another Destiny Spinner then. I can animate this one land. But I guess I can burn some more mana first. Four to activate. I can spend two more mana. They have Death Touch, I believe. Well, two of them have Death Touch. This one doesn't have Death Touch since it was animated later. Alright, uh... Land can go. Land can go. Enchantress Effect can go. Green Sun can go. I mean, they're still definitely the Storm deck. Like, it's more likely that my opponent wins this game than I do, I think, still. Like, all they need is probably two rituals and then Past in Flames, and I lose. Uh, you have Past in Flames, but no mana floating. Yeah. All right, um, I want these, I want this, I want this. <coughs> Collector Oof is like, eh. It might not have too much artifact mana because of Bergy.
But like Carpet of Flowers doesn't really have taxed. Plague seems worse than grass if we're worried about goblins. Isn't Bergy an X1 too, though? Or it's too new, I don't know its exact stats. Isn't it like a 2-1? No, show me results for Bergy MTG. I know what I want. Oh shit, Bergy's a 3-3? Three, three? All right, never mind. Strike that. Just target. So those can probably go. I don't know. Maybe if I have the Doom Wake already. These Trial of Ambitions aren't great. <clears throat> Couple of Elephant Grass over those. Elephant Grass at worst, just cantrips. Try something like this. Oh, no, no, no. Watsi still makes one toughness creatures. They're just white so that they can die to Dread of Night. Um, this hand has a Mind Break Trap, but can't really do anything. Like, I don't have the lands to cast this Enchantress's Presence. I think since I have four Mind Break Traps, I can probably pretty easily pitch this one. Yeah, like, this hand is much better. Just the ability to go turn two Enchantress's Presence and then draw towards relevant cards, I think ends up being significantly stronger. I don't know how many Burgies they play. Like, I, I don't know the Ruby Storm, the Burgie Ruby Storm list well enough to know how reliant they are on it. I think I'm still currently interested in more green mana. There's a world where I want blue there, like, very specifically for if I naturally draw Leovold, but that's a pretty corner case. And over the next couple of turns, I'll Abundant bro Growth and Utopia Sprawl anyway. Yep. Go ahead and do the cheaper one this turn so I can get one draw towards a Mind Break Trap this turn. Now, since I don't have access to blue, I might want to think about it. I get Leovold next turn, if that's what I end up wanting to do with the turn. But I haven't interacted with my opponent's Storm deck, and it's their turn three. That usually ends up being a very scary turn. All right, we'll see if I'm dead.
Ruby storm lines are often not deterministic. There is maybe not a lot, but some degree of fizzling there. I wonder how confident my opponent is in playing this deck also. This doesn't feel like they can go off. Their actions are pretty slow here. There's hope for me. Or at the very least, there's some degree of risk in their lines. Is it gonna be like a past in flames or a wheel? Start a card, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play those cards this turn, sure. They have discarded Seething Song. Oh my god, they hit Past End Flames. Uh, uh, that's a good hit. So that gets them back up to six total mana and gives them one card draw. I see my opponent's hesitancy now in their lines. Like, there's a lot of risk playing out some card like this. You can just get like Binding of the Old Gods, for example. That's a lot of mana to commit to something that doesn't win you the game. Until end of turn. This turn. <clears throat> I also can't F6 because my opponent has wheels in their deck, so... Yep, everything always goes to YouTube. It usually takes a day or two. So, um, I don't think I'm going to end up processing videos today. I will probably put this up Monday. Uh, they hit a Burning Wish. They don't have black mana, so they can't outright kill me, but they can make goblins. Mm, they could also just, like, get a wheel effect and try to keep going. And actually try to get the kill this turn. I have two elephant grass in currently. We're not anywhere close to being grape shotted out. I think this is just going to be goblins and pass. And then I'll get a handful of draws to try to find an elephant grass and go from there. It might not actually be all that many draws. Really?
Oh, their last card was empty. Okay, that's fair. Moto, hello? Moto? Neither clock is ticking down, Moto. Client, are you still functional? Do I have to force quit magic online? Oh, no. So I have... I can potentially take a redraw with an Enchantress's Presence. This is 1, 2, 3. I can play an Enchantress's Presence, redraw, but then I'm short on mana. I guess I'll just start with an Abundant Growth. Take that redraw that way. Yeah, green sun for Sparfrog would be hot here. I'm going to confirm that's in the sideboard. It is in the sideboard. And we can go ahead and move to the next game. I think in this next game, I'm going to try a little bit harder to not die to goblins. I don't know that I'm actually supposed to board in Sparkrog. And I can think about oof. I board in some of this stuff, I probably need to do something like this. Then I'm thinking about boarding out either one Enchantress effect or one Mary's Guile. Let's try this. Yes. <laughs> this will do. <clears throat> I am not even sure if I'm supposed to play this Abundant Growth out on turn one or if I'm supposed to save it for my turn four. Um, a little weird. Maybe I save it. But if I draw an Enchantress, I'd much rather just play that on turn two. If I draw a Destiny Spinner or a Green Sun, I'd like to play those. All right, that's a great card to have access to.
I don't know that I cycle this one this turn because like next turn I can just play Enchantress's presence outright. I'm fine with cycling the first one, but not this second one. SD, thank you very much for following. Hope you're enjoying the content. I think I'm pretty safe to most things that can happen in a single turn cycle. I can lose to some past in flames based lines over multiple turn cycles. If my opponent's 75 has overmaster, I don't expect it to be in the deck right now. I don't think I need to worry about that. Well, I definitely don't need to worry about that then. All right, like my opponent is tanking. I'm trying to find like spin my wheels and like find something to talk about. Uh, but like we're in a we're in a good position. Sure, a, a defense grid if my opponent uh really really smelt mine break trap coming. We only have two mana. Um, Abundant Growth doesn't add extra mana. It changes the mana that lands are allowed to produce. I mean, Lion's Eye Diamond is a pretty broken card. I like to play that card. Um, like, I've, I've played Ruby Storm once, or maybe twice in the past year. I don't think I'm super qualified to talk about, like, the differences between the builds. Opponent is in real danger of just timing out if they spend this long thinking about their actions. One. Two. Three. Mindbreak Trap is now live. There's the thing that our Mindbreak Trap is going to hit. So those things are just going to stay in exile anyway, and there's no possible way outside of Lion's Eye Diamond for my opponent to continue going. I guess I'm still fine if they have double empty the Warrens. Alright, you can keep going.
maybe I should have mind break trapped the first seething song so I don't have to click multiple copies of Empty the Warrens later. Maybe that was a quality of life misplay. I don't know what that gets. But it probably gets something that I end up countering. Or it gets like passed in flames and life's awkward next turn. Do all those not get, like, highlighted? Notably, both the Empty the Warrens and the Burning Wish were exiled, so there is not currently a win condition in the graveyard. Also, I should F2 instead of F6-ing because I have Mind Break Traps in my deck. All right, both, both sides of old Bergy hanging out here. Um, I'll do like that away eventually. My magic online is also starting to get a little laggy. That's a great draw for later. There's abundant growth draws too. I think I just uh, go ahead and fire it off here. Um, I'll save this. I can just take three damage from Bergy and not care. Oh, fast in flames, huh? <laughs> That's exceptionally awkward. It is a shame that you can cast that card and not do anything with it. So they can take two to put another ruby medallion into play, and then they lose that past in flames. Oh, right, they get one mana from Bergy. I guess they can write a flame and then play Ruby Medallion. Sure.
may be correct for them to cast Faithless Looting to just throw two more cards into their graveyard. Um, notably, my opponent is, like, incredibly likely to time out now. They have sub-three minutes on their clock. Um, that's how I'm going to win this game. But Moto, like, come on. All right, so I have one, two, three, four, five. I can play Doomwake Giant and a Wild Growth. I don't know that I actually need to play the Doomwake Giant. Electric Oof is solid. Yeah, this turn was okay. Now they're probably going to Faithless Looting. Oh, they're going to Desperate Ritual. Sure. Desperate times call for desperate measures, I suppose. They kept the Bergy, so they can recast it. I can rebounce it with Caracas. Could also just maybe kill it with Doomwake Giant this turn if I draw an enchantment. Um, it doesn't really matter. So that was one. That second thing was two. All right, you are a one one. Yeah, you are a one one. So this can just be my third. Send them. I'm attacking with the Enchantress because Magic Online is lagging right now and it's easier to do it than not.
Don't actually kill them this turn. Eh, maybe I do. Maybe we can find a Destiny Spinner in here. Hey, a Destiny Spinner. Um, Caracas, you can be a creature. All right, got there. It took a while, but we got there. So my opening hand here has turn one mana acceleration into turn two enchantress. And if I spike a land, I also get one redraw on turn two. Ah, yes. This is the, uh, the snappy modo that I'm used to and love. Uh, do I go so far as love? That might be a bit strong. God damn it. That is four all-in combo decks in a row. Well, all right, maybe it's not fair to call a learn an all-in combo deck, but that's... <sighs> all right, there's the Thassa's Oracle. It doesn't matter if I let them see my hand. There's the Dread Return. After I play Utopia Sprawl, like, they know I'm Enchantress. Like, the jig is up. I'm gonna go ahead and, go ahead and concede now. <clears throat> Mindbreak Trap. In. Engineered Plague for whatever creature type Narcomoeba is. In. Elector Oof. In. Or Frog. Cool Art. Not in. So. <laughs> milling four random cards is sometimes helpful versus them, I guess, technically. Is bad bad enough that I try to spike wins off back to basics? Probably not. Probably gets in my way more than their way. Yeah, I guess if I exile the Oracle or the Dread Return, like that does technically win. Alright, sure. Oh wait, hold on. Does Ground Seal just win the game too? Yeah, Ground Seal also just wins. <clears throat> this Dread Return does target. Alright. Um, Carpet of Flyer is out. Trials of Ambition out. Finding of the Old Gods is... Like, it can blow up artifact mana, but it is exceptionally slow. Seems fine. Uh, 
Um. Yeah. This hand gets improved by a lot of things. The awkward thing is that if our, my, my opponent goes like Dark Ritual into Duder or something like that, mills their library, and then gets to Cabal Therapy, both Mind Break Traps at the same time, it does suck. That's two. That's three. That's getting mind break trapped. Yeah, or we can just, like, name Illusion and win the game on the spot, right? Like... Not all the builds have bridge. And bridge is something that often gets cited out anyway. <coughs> like, you have to make room for the sideboard options somewhere. Um, this hand does nothing. I mulligan this. Hand is solid. Turn to Enchantress's presence. I'm pitching one of these two, and I don't know which one. I think I just pitched the Miri's Guile. That's their second spell. I can't counter that. That uh, probably means I'm dead. Like, they sacrifice this, and then they cast Dread Return as their next spell. And it doesn't actually require them to do anything else. Okay, for this game, they boarded the bridge from below back in. There's a Cabal Therapy. is only the first spell this turn. Yeah, they hit Mind Break Trap. Now Thassa's Oracle is in Graveyard, so is Dread Return. That means I'm dead. My opening hand here is not necessarily exciting. 
but I think it's fine. I have a bunch of one mana cards and an Enchantress. I'll probably play Miri's Guile on turn one, and then an Enchantress on turn two, and go from there. My opponent has Mulligan to five, so I'm just going to get, like, fucking turn one comboed again or something. Oh, well, that's fine. Whatever happens with a Noble Hierarch deck on uh, on turn two is probably fair. This is most likely to be something like Maverick, but it could be some sort of like Bant Oko deck or something like that. Could be Infect technically, but basic forest is not common. I would like to remind you that we've been in the basic forest bracket the entire time. We are the basic forest. Oh, well, Hierarch doing a dance over there. Like, come on. I only get one of these. I want the land. <clears throat> I am not particularly worried about the three damage a turn from this Thalia. more worried about being able to cast my spells in a meaningful way. Plague Engineer would be a beating, I suppose. God damn it. That's just that's just how this league goes, huh? Okay. That's cool. My current plan is just find Doomweight Giant. That is going to give me another card later. I am good with that. It's a it's a fine play from their end. Like it does give me one less mana from something like a Sarah Sanctum. Mm. 
I might be under enough pressure now where I actually just fetch a non-basic land. Actually, no, no. I, I just cast Abundant Growth this turn, right? That gives me black mana. Yeah. Yeah, I, I meant a card worth of value. Flashback. Yeah, I should have specified. Like, I'm, I'm going to wipe their board and then give myself a bonus 2-2. Two, two. God, Doomwake. Oh, I guess, like, the Kaya just gets rid of my Abundant Growth, right? And so I actually don't... Nope, nope, it doesn't. Um, but I really should have considered fetching Bayou there because of uh, Kaya potentially exiling my Black Source. Um, I just green sun or a destiny spinner, and then only Thalia can attack in next turn. Doesn't actually contribute towards me actually winning the game, and like the ultimate on this thing is also just going to kill me. I don't think that line's actually all that good. Eh. All right. I guess I should put it on one of these. There's a little too much to ask to find the Doomwake, huh? Already played a land. to discard more. I have four cards in exile. Assuming they exile one of my little enchantments things. That's five cards in exile. Um, so I'm dead to the Planeswalker next turn. So I have to both answer their board and Planeswalker next turn. Oh, wait, hold on. If they... Yeah. I can Binding of the Old Gods to answer Kaya. And then go from there. Riot Arbor didn't attack there. Like, do you have a collected company or something like batshit crazy like that?
Thera's Sanctum would be incredibly good here. Nope. Did not hit. Okay. So, I'm dead to that, so I just have to answer it. And then I'm going to probably just gain two life off this Destiny Spinner, if I were to guess. Okay. This is good. So assuming I stay alive a little while longer, things are okay. That is a bit of an assumption, though. I can do it as of right now. So I have to, assuming all three of their creatures with power and toughness crash in, I have to block two. Do I lose both of these? That's fine. Well, I guess I could have done that differently, but I feel like protecting my life total here is extremely valuable. And I have redundant enchantress effects in hand. That's unfortunate. All right, so they get a 2-2. Two -two. That's fine. I'll just Binding of the Old Gods it. And then next turn, I'll put a new Enchantress effect into play. And that 2-2 two -two is currently my win condition. Okay, I, I think we stabilized. I want to leave that. Yeah, I can just leave that. Ah, yes, my tutu has death touch.
So this turn, this is going to be an Enchantress's Presence. And now, now we're just going ham. Yeah, we're we're not going to lose to very many things from here. Like, now we don't even lose to a hasty thing like Questing Beast or Shifting Ceratops. I haven't done the math. My opponent might just be dead next turn to a Destiny Spinner activation. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 enchantments. Yeah, so I play one enchantment and then activate Destiny Spinner, and I'm good. Although I guess I need to play two enchantments because, like, I'm going to lose this one. Sure. Oh yeah, I can I can also just activate twice. Yeah, that's fair. We're 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 in garbage mode where it doesn't really matter what I do. I'm going to win the game. Oh, I needed to put these on the stack in the other order. It did, and it didn't let me do that. Cool, Moto. Thank you. That's really frustrating. Like, that is... Not... Really acceptable here. Um, just to make sure that I don't deck, I'm just going to make more Destiny Spinners rather than, like, things that draw cards. All right, our opponent has conceded. Uh, so what are we going against? Some sort of like Maverick deck. Probably want the Engineered Plague for human. Well, Engineered Plague is like so much worse than Doom Wake Giant. I probably still want it. Are you a human? You are a human. That's awkward. Maybe not then. So, like, I don't want Carpet of Flowers, and I don't really want Ground Seals, but most of the rest of the stuff that I'm doing seems fine.
I want to board in three cards. For larger creatures, I should probably be thinking about this stuff. Maybe like Engineered Plague and two Elephant Grass for those. It's possible that I do want the other Elephant Grass as well. Didn't see Stoneforge, it might be there. Electra Oof has text for sure. Grass is middling versus Maverick. Yeah, but if I get the engine going, I just win, right? So a middling card that helps me get to the end game might be fine. Eh, maybe you're right. What if I play Oof for potential equipment? Eh. Eh. So this hand is almost perfect. But we don't have green mana. Like, this this is the way I want a hand to look in this matchup. Like, a turn one accelerant, followed by enchantress, followed by multiple things that can trip. Uh. Hey. Okay. This hand has a plan. The plan is, like, wild growth into Trial of Ambition, into Copy Trial of Ambition every single turn for the rest of the game. So I'll keep this and toss back the Binding of the Old Gods. I think. Actually, maybe the Destiny Spinner is worse. One of these two. Binding is just, like, not... Easily castable yet, but is a good card later. But Destiny Spinner blocks now. I think I'm going to take the card that's good later, because I think Trial of Ambition plus Estrid's Invocation drags this game on for a long time. I will need another colored source in order to do that plan, though. Because I'm going to Verdant Catacombs probably for Basic Swamp. And then I don't have blue yet. I mean, Destiny Spinner is, is good against Thalia. It trades with a Plague Engineer. Assuming Plague Engineer isn't on its creature type. Not really good. Yeah, I mean, opponent mulling to five is very good for us. That may mean that they have mulligan to something like a Thalia or a Containment, or not Containment Priest, a uh, Ether Sworn Canonist. Sure. That's fine. I'm not planning on playing more than one spell. <clears throat> Did you play your cards in the wrong order because of deafening silence? Ooh. Shame. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine.
All I need here is time. Yeah, Spatula of the Ages. With the release of the new set, they did this, like, faded out order for the Snowlands, which is why they look funny. They've been trying to do that sort of thing to try to make card types more distinguishable at a glance with things like that different legendary frame for art as well. What is my opponent thinking about? Whether or not to, like, crack Horizon Canopy? What to Green Sun for? Ooh, Scrib Ranger. Um... Eeg. Okay. Lol. Quite how few resources we have here. I'm absolutely in the driver's seat of this game. <clears throat> Especially now. If they wasteland this trop, it's a bit of a nuisance, but I don't actually care all that much once an enchantress is in play. Okay, we'll take our time here, but I don't expect to lose from this position. A binding of the old gods, the deafening silence, once I have a fourth mana. Yeah, I can put a destiny spinner in play to pressure that, that's fine. Or I can just binding of the old gods that now. Uh, yeah, you're, you're catching the good part where we get to bully someone, not the part where we got bullied, so that's good.
you think my opponent is done yet? I have a recurring edict effect every turn. Yep, that's the... That's the point where our opponent is done. Okay, uh, overall thoughts on the deck list. Um... It's really hard to say because we we played against combo decks four rounds in a row, and so like we didn't really get to do our thing very much this league. I mean, it was close to three hours in order to complete this league, but for most of the time, it was us like barely staving off death or our opponents like dealing with hate cards and counter and mind break traps, not like the deck doing its thing. Um, if I were to take a guess, the deck feels a little light on safety in game one. Like, Binding of the Old Gods is a little slow as a removal spell. And so a lot of times with other builds of Enchantress, I'm used to like being able to hide behind an elephant grass for a prolonged period of time and drag the game on that way. But, like, Binding is just so powerful with Estrid's Invocation that building your removal suite like this instead of relying on uh, Elephant Grass makes a lot of sense. But, I don't know, like, I'm such a dog to combo in game one, and I don't know that there's too much that I can do about that. Um, this deck feels really mana hungry, and I want more Carpet of Flowers, but like I said that in round one, and I'm always going to want more Carpet of Flowers in this deck. Like, when you get to start doing this stuff towards the end game, it's so strong that I just want to get to that stage of the game more consistently. I would want to either have two or three copies of Carpet of Flowers in the 75, um, maybe cutting something cute like Spore Frog in order to make that happen. Like, I'd probably be on board with cutting, like, these two cards for two more Carpet of Flowers or something like that. Look, I wanted the frog to be good. I did. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't think it quite worked out. Alright, for folks watching on the YouTube side, if you made it this far, you know, please consider liking and commenting on the video. It means a lot and helps more people find my content. And if you want to see your own deck on this channel, it's $20. Uh, and if you want the deck list or that information, it's always in the video description. Click show more if you can't see it. Have a great rest of the day.